Well, Adam Schiff, member of the U.S. House of Representatives, a Democrat from Burbank, Glendale, and Pasadena, and the ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee. Thank you very much for joining it's us. Great to be with you again. So you have said that you were optimistic that the investigation into possible Russian interference in the U.S. election is back on track. Why do you say that? Well, we have a new Republican lead in Mike Conaway from Texas. Uh, I think he's a very serious guy, and we've had a number of conversations since he took the GOP reins. Uh, and he is determined, as I am, to follow the facts wherever they lead. Uh, we're certainly going to be continuing now the investigation on the issue of uh, coordination or possible collusion between U.S. persons affiliated with the Trump campaign uh, and the Russians, but also the other issues that are so important, the U.S. response to the Russian hacking, the intelligence assessment of the Russian role, their slick media campaign, their use of paid media, as well as any other tactics the Russian used to influence our election. So you also have, uh, have scheduled hearings? Yes. We had a couple hearings that were postponed uh, when our chair was in the process of recusing himself. Uh, those hearings are now back on track. Uh, we'll be having a follow-up closed hearing with the former director of the, uh, the I'm sorry, the current director of the FBI, uh, Comey, as well as the current director of NSA, Rogers. But we'll also have, be having an open hearing with former directors Clapper and Brennan of the CIA and the DNI, but as well as Sally Yates from the Justice Department. I have to ask you, you did an interview with CNN, uh, or a podcast, I should say, where you talked about how you believe the Democratic Party failed to explain why people should care about the Russian probe. Why did you say that? Well, you might remember that uh, in the middle of the presidential campaign, it wasn't exactly a secret that the Russians were the party responsible for hacking into the democratic organizations and uh, and publishing through these cutouts like WikiLeaks and Guccifer to, to these documents. Uh, in fact, in late July of last year, uh, Donald Trump, then candidate Trump, at a press conference uh, said, hey, Russians, if you're listening, ha hack Hillary Clinton's emails, you'll be richly rewarded by the press. He wasn't choosing the Russians out of thin air. He was choosing them because it was already widely the perception that this was the case. Uh, where I think Democrats uh, really uh, failed is that we were not able to persuade the American people why they should care that the documents they were seeing, these, you know, Podesta emails or whatnot, they were only seen because the Russians wanted them to see it, because the Russians had been responsible for this hack, because they wanted to try to influence the American electorate. Uh, we just didn't succeed in, in persuading people that that was more important than anything these particular emails had to say. Right, but did you fail in persuading them or did they just not care? Well, I, you know, I think it's one and the same thing, but I do think that we can't lay the complete responsibility uh, at the GOP. The GOP certainly has culpability here because they, as President, uh, then candidate Trump said, welcome this kind of Russian intervention. Uh, but we as Democrats have to take responsibility for not persuading the country that this was a foreign adversarial power meddling in our affairs uh, and that they ought to reject anyone who would openly solicit uh, help from a foreign party. The probe seems to have been overshadowed by affairs overseas. We have the Syrian crisis and the use of Russian of uh, sarin nerve gas. You have the Korean crisis and you have the uh, diplomatic issues relating to the Trump White House and the Kremlin uh, over Syria. Uh, does that somehow diminish the importance of this probe? Well, I, these are all, I think, critical issues. Uh, the probe continues to be very important, not because we're trying to relitigate the election, but because the intelligence community has concluded the Russians will do this again. So we can expect in future elections to see the Russians uh, once again try to influence our outcomes. Uh, but these, these issues involving Syria and North Korea are vitally important. Uh, indeed, North Korea is likely to be a flashpoint uh, and a very hot crisis, uh, not only now, but uh, at a point in this administration when the North Koreans are able to improve their intercontinental ballistic missile technology and miniaturize a nuclear device uh, that will allow them to deliver a nuclear weapon to the United States. Uh, that crisis is likely coming during this president's term. Uh, so it's hard to understate the importance of that issue. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, the Politico just on Friday uh, did an article where they said, listen, if Dianne Feinstein decides not to run for re-election, Adam Schiff is uh, certainly a prime candidate. Uh, you have become sort of the, the figurehead for the anti-Trump movement on Capitol Hill. Uh, let me ask you one thing. If Dianne Feinstein deci decides not to run for re-election, will you be a candidate for that seat? Well, I w would certainly uh, seriously consider it, but uh, it's really my hope that she does run again.
Uh, we could use her continued experience. Uh, her she would be near ability. 90 at the end of another term. Is you that know, too old? I, I, th it, I think it all depends on one's capability, and she's extraordinarily capable. Uh, I think she's really at the top of her game. Uh, so if she makes the decision to run another term, I think California would be well served by her continuing in office. Let's finally get back to uh, House Intelligence. Do you believe that... I mean, some have suggested you don't need two committees. You don't need a Senate investigation. You don't need a House investigation. Do you believe that your committee will unveil something that we won't hear on the Senate side? Well, here's the challenge that both committees face. Uh, we have very small staffs to begin with. We have enormous agencies to oversee. Uh, on the House side, we have about seven staff working on the investigation. The Senate has about seven staff working on theirs. That is minuscule compared to a global investigation that we're trying to conduct you lose either committee, you lose half the resources that are devoted to this. We can't afford that. What I would like to see, although I have to say I've only persuaded one myself, I haven't persuaded anyone else, um, we ought to join forces. Uh, after 9-11, we had a joint House and Senate Intelligence Committee investigation. That effectively doubles what you can do because you can focus your resources more effectively. And we had an independent commission. Uh, I'd love to see us do both. I'd love to see us with an independent commission that's completely outside the political process, that is staffed enough, resourced enough, has a single focus on that mission. Uh, and to the degree we can, I'd love to see House and Senate working together in this investigation. The Honorable Adam Schiff, uh, the member of the U.S. House of Representatives, ranking Democrat on House Intelligence. Thank you very much for joining us.